Welcome back to the Roundtable Sports Podcast. I am your host, John Newman, and I don't have anybody with me today. Um, I will be talking about the Kansas City Chiefs training camp, which is now just 10 days away in St. Joe, uh, where the team will be preparing for the 2019 season. Uh, they got 15 days of practice up there. Uh, available to the public for the fans to go and see, and I have done it before, uh, and I might actually go out and check out some of these new faces we've got this year, which brings me into my first uh, subject, which is those new faces. Um, of course, uh, Frank Clark coming from the Seattle Seahawks uh, at the defensive end spot. He's uh, looking to be one of the primary pass rushers for this defense next season as uh, everybody uh, around the kingdom knows that we lost D Ford and Justin Houston. Uh, we, uh, let them walk and I'm saying we, uh, the, the franchise let them walk, you know, the front office. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, the honey badger, Tyron Matthew coming from Houston by way of the Arizona Cardinals and Louisiana State University where, uh, he was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. As a, as a defensive back, pretty incredible college career and a uh, solid start to his career, though he's played for two different teams. A journeyman as a uh, defensive back, as a safety, but um, he is probably going to find a solid home here in Kansas City, I'd hope, uh, with, with what we've got. And then um, rookies, uh, Juan Thornhill, uh, is, is a potential starter. He was selected 63rd overall, and a lot of people had him as a top five safety in this class coming out of Virginia. Um, and I look, you know, looking at him physically, he's about Eric Berry's size, um, and maybe, you know, not as, as, as rangy or athletic side to side, uh, but straight line speed. He can keep up with just about anybody staying over the top. Uh, he had, uh, several, I think he had over five interceptions for Virginia this past season. I'm not exactly sure. Haven't looked at his stats since, uh, before the combine or around the, uh, combine. Um, so yeah, that's one of the rookies that we got. Of course, uh, the running back room on the other side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball, has, have, has a couple new faces, uh, with Carlos Hyde coming from, uh, Cleveland and, uh, Darwin Thompson. Uh, a rookie running back uh, that was drafted this year, another addition to the running back room who uh, Darwin Thompson is a strong, low-profile runner. He gets underneath guys and, and uh, has some explosiveness. Uh, and he'll, he'll look to try to make, uh, make his way up the depth chart uh, that's got Damian Williams and, and Daryl Williams already there, uh, amongst others. Uh, another rookie on the offensive side of the ball, uh, to be looking for in training camp to develop it is McCole Hardman, the rookie out of out of Georgia. He's an explosive route runner, can probably do do a lot more than what was asked by the University of Georgia and Coach Mark Richt. He's a solid athlete, um, and, and he has some drops uh, and, and whatnot, but he mainly catches with his hands. There I said uh, Mark Richt. I meant to say Kirby Smart. Of course, he is the coach of Georgia uh, Rick was longtime coach there, uh, and, and recently, uh, retired in the past few years. Uh, solid athlete though is, is Nicole Hardman, and, uh, yeah, uh, another new face offensive side of the ball, Blake Bell, former Oklahoma Sooner. There's a lot of Sooner fans around Kansas City. He played quarterback until, uh, Trevor Knight arrived at Oklahoma. Um, he was back up to Landry Jones. He played a few, I think he had a few starts, but he's, uh, six foot six, 250 pound tight end now. He doesn't have any, uh, touchdown receptions, uh, as, as a pro. Uh, so that is, you know, uh, kind of a unproductive career so far for Blake Bell. Looking for an opportunity, uh, with this Kansas City Chiefs team and, and Patrick Mahomes as quarterback to, to, uh, kind of, uh, break some of the, uh, the curses that have, have plagued him for his career, uh, not getting into games in the red zone and whatnot, but he's definitely got this size. Um, flipping it back over to the defense, 
uh, some more new defensive linemen uh, as uh, as well as Frank Clark, um, Emmanuel Agba, and Alex Okafor, uh, both defensive ends as well, looking to add depth at those spots. Uh, guys like Breland Speaks probably gonna uh, since they've already since he's already been with the team get a a uh, chance to start early on in training camp. We'll see if Agba or Okafor can can beat him out. Uh, no doubt about it, Frank Clark is starting a defensive end on the opposite side of, of whoever they decide to go with there. Um, Darren Lee, who's coming off of a performance-enhancing drug violation at the end of last year where he was suspended for four games, coming over, uh, former uh, New York Jet Darren Lee. Lee has really made some solid plays throughout his career, um, but the Jets decided to move on from him. Uh, as they move forward, um, with, with some younger guys, uh, another new linebacker, Damian Wilson, uh, coming, coming, uh, with some starting experience from, from Dallas, started a few games and played a lot of special teams for, for the Cowboys. So there's a couple new linebackers to look for at training camp, uh, new corner, Bashad Breland. Um, he's played slot and he's played outside. Breland has been kind of inconsistent over his career, and he had uh, kind of a bad season with Green Bay, but he still made a couple of good plays for them uh, down the stretch. He's uh, made some spectacular plays, wild interceptions, and put together a, a couple good seasons when he was a Washington Redskin in the past before uh, he was a Green Bay Packer this year. Um and then, of course, uh, we've got plenty of returning faces on both sides of the ball, mainly on offense, though. I mentioned Damian and Daryl Williams uh, and and uh, Anthony Sherman still at fullback for the Chiefs in that running back room. Uh, they've got their six best offensive linemen also returning, Eric Fisher, Cam Irving, and Andrew Wiley being uh, fifth, sixth. Um, and then Ryder, Austin Ryder at center, Laurent Duvernay Tardif at, at guard, um, and then Mitchell Schwartz, uh, at, at right tackle. So, um, definitely always nice in the NFL when you can bring back, uh, the same offensive line and quarterback, uh, with, especially with weapons returning like Tyreek Hill, who knows if he will be suspended or not right now. It's kind of looking like maybe there uh, won't be a decision um, uh, that's that's going to put Tyreek Hill out for for you know more than four games, uh, and maybe he he doesn't get suspended at all. There's Sammy Watkins. The big question with Sammy's always been his whole career: how healthy can he stay over the course of that 16 game regular season? Um, and then trending upward since coming out of Florida has been Demarcus Robinson in this wide receiver core. Uh, and also returning for the receiving core is Garrick Dieter, uh, who, who made some plays last year at the end of the season, you know, made a few good plays. Um, and, and has been a good locker room guy for Kansas City, uh, since, since coming here. Uh, also, um, the tight end spot, you know, we mentioned Blake Bell, new face there, but Travis Kelsey, uh, still leading, uh, pretty much the offensive side of the locker room really as a whole from that tight end spot. And he, uh, looks to do more amazing things with Mahomes next season. Um, Harrison Butker returning at kicker, Dustin Colquitt returning at punter. So special teams wise, not much is expected to change. Defensive side of the ball, like I said, there was quite a few new faces there, but you still got uh, Chris Jones, solid defensive lineman who, who's played on the interior at the 3-4 defensive end spot now that we're switching the defense under new coordinator Steve Spagnolo. Uh, I should have mentioned this earlier. They will be, be switching from the 3-4 to the 4-3 defense. For those of you that don't know, a 3-4 defense has three down linemen on the defensive side of the ball with four linebackers. Most of the time, those outside linebackers in the 3-4 are your main pass rushers, opposed to the 4-3 that has four down linemen with only three linebackers who typically play behind the line of scrimmage in the 4-3 uh, defense. Um, 
So Chris Jones returning as an interior defensive lineman. Wonder if this switch to the 4-3 is going to limit what he can do with the pass rush, but I sincerely doubt that with, with the skills that Chris Jones has shown uh, he possesses. Uh, Kendall Fuller at cornerback, who um, maybe didn't have his best season as a chief last year, but uh, has, has been uh, a solid corner since coming into the league. Uh, Anthony Hitchens at linebacker, once again, another guy who, uh, didn't quite transition to Bob Sutton's defense as well as he should have coming from, uh, Dallas. And, uh, Reggie Ragland, who, uh, has, has made some solid plays in his career as a chief. Uh, he's done some good things and of course he's missed some big plays and gave up some things. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see if he improves with the, uh, new defense that the Kansas City Chiefs will be um, un- unveiling next year. Ben Neiman, another linebacker returning, as well as Dorian O'Daniel, uh, young guys, uh, Armani Watts, Traverius Ward at uh, corner, and, and um, Tremont Smith, uh, special teams and defensive back guy, Keith Reeser, as well as uh, Dirty Dan, Daniel Sorensen, uh, returning as a, as a backup safety as depth at those safety spots as I'm projecting Juan Thornhill to get the starting spot. Um, so that's kind of my rundown of year two of the Mahomes quarterback era here in Kansas City. Uh, this will be Steve Spagnuolo's first year as as the Kansas City uh, defensive coordinator where he'll be switching, like I said, to the 4-3 uh, defense. Uh, we know that there's no Houston and no Ford who were the key pass rushers last year. But uh, hopefully the improvements to the secondary for Kansas City, uh, as well as the addition of Frank Clark and hopefully the scheme switch, uh, um, you know, hurts the division's ability to scout these Chiefs early on. Uh, and, and overall, the league as a whole, not just the AFC West as a division, uh, hopefully it hinders their ability to scout and predict what this defense is going to do. Uh, I am projecting... Uh, plenty of wins next year, uh, playoff appearance, of course. And, um, you know, I, I like to say right now the Kansas City Chiefs have as good of a chance as anybody to win the Super Bowl. And I think, uh, we will continue to say that for years to come with, uh, MVP Patrick Mahomes in, uh, in the starting position here in Kansas City. Um, I think barring injury to Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs win. Uh, 12 games. They won a dozen games next year. Uh, I'm pretty firm on that. Uh, especially with the division that we are in right now where Joe Flacco is one of the quarterbacks. And then, of course, you've got aging, uh, um, an aging Phillip Rivers and, and the Los Angeles Chargers and, um, Derek Carr who is looking to kind of turn his his past few seasons struggles around here now that he's got you know a guy like Antonio Brown to throw to um in, in Oakland or uh I think they're Los Angeles or, or Las Vegas wherever the Raiders desire to go uh I think they're in Los Angeles for one more season before being in Vegas finally uh who cares they're the Raiders they're ugly they're one of the ugliest franchises I'm sorry about it just how I feel, rate a hater here in Kansas City, um, and and of course we don't like those donkeys either. You know the bolts we can put up with uh, until Phyllis starts crying, and and then um, you know we kind of uh, just like to make fun of the fact that that Philip Rivers is is always you know yelling at his opponents at the at the hands of of the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Uh, as, as that's happened in the past. Hopefully there's more of that to come in the 2019 season. And, uh, yeah, I don't have much more to say. Uh, thank you all for listening to this episode of Roundtable Sports. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, be sure to follow on Twitter at TalkMoreSports. That is the official Roundtable Sports Twitter account. Uh, as well as, you know, get on YouTube and search up Roundtable Sports as well and subscribe there. That always helps. And um, we look to to have, you know, a semi-official studio uh, 
uh, room in place for the podcast once uh, I get a co-host on this thing. And hopefully you guys can really uh, enjoy what we have to say and, and the dialogue that we have, Tyler and I, whenever uh, we get that set up. Um, and, uh, yeah, as always, I'm going to end with, uh, uh, you know, telling you all about uh, where to go to, to follow us. Anchor.fm, of course, is the uh, place where the podcast will be released first. Uh, that is how it is getting distributed to, to iTunes and whatnot. And if you are interested in making your own podcast, be sure to check out Anchor.fm. Uh, they are, you know, the best in the business as, as far as, um, what I've used to make, uh, SoundCloud. Um, you know, Google has made it kind of difficult to host the podcast with just Google, uh, sites or whatever it is. Um, so I choose, you know, Anchor FM over all of the other hosting, RSS hosting websites that you can pick from. Uh, so yeah. Thanks for listening. This has been John Newman with Roundtable Sports. I'm out.